Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're going to be talking about three pushes, three levels, level three and day three. Hopefully to clarify uh, a lot of questions regarding some of the videos last week on level three and, and this will hopefully bring together the big picture, the weekly template uh, and reinforcing the, the basic concepts, looking for best trade setups and, and why and how they will set up. Remember there will always be exceptions. And I'm not trying to map out exactly what market movements are going to be. I, I have no interest in that. I have no idea or interest in predicting. I know there's people out there who are gurus who can tell you everything about where the market's going to go. It's not, that's not my goal. My goal is to come each day and look for the easiest, best trade setups. And that's the one thing that, again, I keep reinforcing. Identify your best trade setups, you know, and just study them relentlessly until you know every single variation and aspect of what they're about and then only focus on your best trade setups I don't care where the market's going I don't I don't have any interest in any of the other you know commitments of traders reports uh, again we don't talk about news I don't get in front of the news but I am aware that on the news calendar that can build up to a day three you know type setup so again I'm not chasing pips I am looking for best trade setups so three pushes will occur on any time frame typically this will end a move on a third level and a new one may begin or consolidate if it's a continuation move now now again coming back to understanding timings typically I'm looking for this to happen on a third level of rise or fall we can look at any instrument this is gold we have one push and this is a 15 minute chart. One push, two pushes, and a third push back into the high before the reversal occurs. This is on a 15 minute chart. And we can look at a one minute chart. We have, again, there's our pump and dump setup heading right into the US Open on a one minute chart at the high of the day, three levels of rise. We'll talk about that in a moment. 25, 25, and 25. One push, two pushes, three pushes, and the reversal. We can spot this on a daily chart. We have one push beginning of the month, two pushes, and a third push up to the high. So again, they will occur on any time frame, uh, on any market, typically on a last level of rise or fall. So again, the difference between three pushes is that three pushes will typically end a move and then we have three levels which is a session opportunity so the three levels the three pushes will be looking for where the opportunity arises to enter the market or exit if you're already in an existing trade at the beginning of the sessions coming back to understanding our timing window Asia 8 to 11 p.m. London 2 to 5 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time in New York 8 to 11 a.m. and depending which market you're trading the equity market specifically the equity market hours may have high impact on the existing pattern at the higher low of the day or the session with three levels that can be increments of 25 and again from where the move starts so we're below 75 the market moves up to double zeros double zeros to 25 it gets up into the third level three levels of rise 25 25 and almost 75 it gets up puts a high in place and we get peak formations above the quarter level on the third level we'll come back and visit this in a moment but you'll notice that the volume the higher lows the volume is trapped in that upper quarter after three levels of rise so three levels versus level three three levels is increments of 25 25 and 25 However, on markets like the NASDAQ, gold, or oil on any given day may rise in increments of 100, 100, and 100. So important to understand that the instrument that you are trading, know it intimately in terms of its volatility, as you may be looking for a reversal, counter-trending a large move at the low of the week because it's moved 75 pips, and this market is moving in 100 pip levels of rise or fall. And you'll also notice on this market that we had one push two pushes and a third push to the high which ended the move at the high of the week one two three three pushes third level and again this is also an example of a high of the day high of the week uh, three sessions high for a level three trade opportunity
distinguishing between three pushes, three levels, and then level three, which is what we just saw on the NASDAQ. We had three levels of rise. We had level three at the high of the week, uh, high of the day. And in some cases, we may see these at the high of the month. It depends on how that template is setting up. Low of the month or high of the week, low of the week, which in some cases can be all three all at once. And we just saw the day three, high of the week, low of the week opportunity. We will see three day setups occur in various forms where we could see a consolidation occur over day one. This is Monday. The pink line is our Friday Monday separator. We have day one. Into the close of day one, we have three levels of rise, putting in a peak formation at the high of the week. Day one, day two, day three, pulling back into the peak formation, giving us a possible high of the week level at 50. So a three-day setup that pulls back and doesn't give us the large move until day five. So we have a three-day setup. The consolidation is there, but the vertical move comes in day five. Now, obviously, this is a continuation move. There were other session trades. Within this, we had a high of the week, high of the session, three levels of rise on Tuesday. We had that at the London high uh, on Monday. So again, market hasn't gone quite gone three levels, but we have three pushes on the 15-minute chart up to major round numbers for a session high of day, low of day trade opportunity. The market then proceeds to go in three pushes into the low. Three pushes ends the move for a three pushes three levels rise back to the high of the week. So again, timing wise, I'm looking for the opportunities where three pushes ends a move on a third level of rise or fall, potentially on a level three. And we talked about don't counter trend level three trades last day. It's important to understand why, because when we have a market that's moving, we had a strongly trending uh, Japanese yen. One of the first things I look for is, has the market moved three levels in between sessions or overnight? And so we saw a strongly trending market. We can go back and look at the Japanese yen. We talked about this. Even in a strongly trending market, these markets will come back to get traders who are caught up high chasing the trend. And again, if we just come back, we'll talk about the 100 pip boxes in a moment. But we have a market that goes three levels, consolidates, and goes three levels again. So this is an example of a breakout. So three things markets do. Breakout, pullback, continuation. And overnight has three levels of rise. So where the breakout occurs, we have 25, 25, and into the third level perfect timing for a market that comes right up into the high at the beginning of the Asian session. We have volume trapped up high within that high movement. We have a quarterly level higher low above 25. This is a perfect textbook setup and we have longs chasing the move higher and higher on the way up into that level three trade opportunity. You get a combination of three pushes ending a move three levels of rise or fall. We could be on a level three, three weeks, three days, and that may be a Monday, Tuesday, and a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, high of the week, low of the week, or a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday reversal, that sort of opportunity. So when we get to week three, again, high of month, low of month, high of year, low of year, in some cases, a trader pointed out a, a fantastic opportunity last week on the pound Swiss. When we take a look at this chart uh, back to March, we can see there was a peak formation made back in March a few months ago. The market went vertical on uh, Tuesday, all the way back up to the high. This is a textbook opportunity potentially. Again, coming back to our Monday, Tuesday, we talked about initial balance. If you're not sure what the initial balance is, go back and search in the videos for the initial balance uh, 80% of the time, Monday, Tuesday, can set the high or low boundary for the week. And what that means is that that can give us a bias when one of those peak formations may be locked in. But we had a market that went vertical, so again, observing where volume is chasing a move up high. Does it mean that that is going to reverse? No, it does not. We are looking for the opportunity when it pre presents. So again, coming back to three levels of rise, the market continues and goes again. One push, two push. Now we 
end the move at an existing high, high of the month. And in this particular case, high of the month, high of the week, high of the day, high of the session, we have our middle structure for our M and a pin hammer right at the beginning of the London session. This market is potentially an ideal candidate now for a complete reversal. And this, I've, I've talked about being observant to notice where there are gaps on breakouts of daily levels where, where markets have broken out end of day. Longer time frame traders may be in the market. They will come back and hit stops at break even trap traders whatever that may be but this is an ideal version of watching a, mar a market go vertical and then identifying again count the pushes one push two push three pushes into the high and then the reversal the m formation the engulfment the london open perfect timings we have an engulfment of the whole upper structure and even if you miss that there's a first bounce opportunity pull back breakout pull back continuation move we're coming out of a level three, three days of rise. So the peak formation was put in on Monday, day one, day two, day three, up high, and the reversal, and then opportunity potentially again for a second day trade. People may forget about this pair. It goes into a bit of a choppy mess on Thursday, and Friday gives a low of the week trading opportunity in the Europe London window. And the only three things that markets do, they break out, they pull back, and they trend. They break out, they pull back, and they fail, and will typically be called a false break reversal. Or they're in a trading range where they go back and forth between a high and a low. To some degree, the euro is an example of that. We put in a low on Tuesday. The market came up. Again, you'll observe three pushes. We talked about this earlier. Came back down into the low. So we have a 75 pip box the market effectively traded inside of between Tuesday and Friday. So we're in a trading range and again an example where there may be opportunities within here at the session timings and the windows. But I want to be looking to sell high or potentially buy low depending on where and what time I'm trading at. And again observing where volume may be trapped up high where three pushes may end a move. And when we're in a 75 pip box this is three levels as opposed to a third level or a day three type setup. We have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There are session trade scalps within here, but I would not be looking to size into anything heavy uh, unless I'm coming out of the third level at the right timing and we got volume. This is a perfect setup on Wednesday. The other trades would have been scalps uh, for the session and happily take you know 20 to 25, especially on the Euro. I'll encourage you to go and look at your own charts to really grasp these concepts and understand the importance of these number boxes. We have 100 pip boxes. Three levels can be any movement of 50 to 75 pips. So the trigger that I would look for is has there been movement overnight or from a previous session? That tells me that there's going to be traders caught into or potentially caught into those moves. Now the next question is, is this a trading range, a trend trade, or a potential reversal trade? Is it a scalp? Am I at the high of the week, the low of the week? Am I up high? Is it just sideways? All of these are questions that you need to look for. And then again, if you have a playbook, you'll recognize these without even having to think. You'll look and say, this is just going to be a, a session scalp. It's a great opportunity. There's probably an easy 25 there. Or, hey, this is moving up. We're at the high of the month. This has the potential to maybe drop 150 pips. Whatever that may be, this comes back to preparation, planning, and then obviously the understanding of how you're going to execute that in advance when price behaves as expected. If it doesn't behave or show you that pattern, then stand back and stand aside and wait to see how that evolves as there may be a second chance opportunity, a first bounce, whatever that may be. So again, a level three, that market may have moved in 50 uh, or 100 pip increments as we observed on the NASDAQ. I'll just fix that. And so depending on the volatility of the instrument, major pairs may be three levels. It might be 25, 50, and 75. And again, if we're going long, it might have come down from double zeros from 75 down to 50 and 25, between 25 and double zeros. Day three, trigger, high of the week, low of the week. Those are the opportunities where you'll either have a three-day consolidation. And gold was an excellent example of that. If we just uh, kind of zoom out briefly, we had a high of the week opportunity Thursday put in our, our high and then we had three days of drop. Now people, the easiest way to recognize three days of drop is that we had uh, three daily lows broken. Um, on Friday was day one. Monday, 
day two. They broke the low on day two, and then Tuesday they came back, broke the low of Monday on day three, and they locked in the low and then came back into the low. We have a consolidation down low again. Get Peter Brandt's books, Schaubacher, Edwards and McGee. We have a, a rectangle at the bottom of the week on three days of drop for an explosive breakout trade. So again, if you're not sure what a breakout trade is uh, or what a good breakout trade looks like, Peter Brandt would call that bar a, a, a bar that completes the pattern. It may not be textbook for him, but this is a, a sideways rectangle. We got about uh, 24 hours of volume there, roughly 20 hours of volume. And there's a 100 pip move out. But this gives us our direction of bias heading into the next couple of days. Three days down, and again count the boxes, 100, 100, 100, peak formation drop. This is the third level on the current week. So we have 300 from the previous week's high. And then we put in a Monday, Tuesday, 200 pip high. They go into the third box, lock in the low, 300, low, 300 pips of drop with a W formation. They trade back into the low for a squeeze and a breakout trade outside of a 75 pip box on the day 25 25 and 25 level three at the session open of london news i don't trade in front of the news there are news catalyst opportunities we'll talk about those later but news can be a trap that builds up over the week or over the day as we saw on boe three levels of rise double zeros and a straight vertical move on the news itself boe the the Market came up, and this is a dead giveaway. They trap volume right off the bat at the beginning of the day above 50. They take it up to the top of the double zero box. Pin hammer right at the beginning of the session. Three levels of rise, three sessions of rise, and a vertical 100 pip move. And you'll notice that it just goes down far enough in three pushes that end the move. We'll zoom in here. One push, two push, three pushes and then engulfment sideways and the reversal and consolidation into the end of the session. So do not think that this is an accident. Uh, I know there's people out there going, oh, this is all great in hindsight. This is an organized plan that exists and, and continues to happen week in and week out. So do your homework. These opportunities are everywhere. Not to say that you had to get in here, uh, but again, there were opportunities possibly on a second bounce trade first bar entry and you'll notice again a one two three that ends the move and I don't suggest that anybody trades the news itself unless they are experienced and, um, and I have had everything done to me so when I tell you these things I'm telling you with absolute certainty and confidence that you will see the same things happen over and over again uh, but the opportunities are there uh, endlessly after a large news type catalyst move, there could be a first bounce or a second day trade opportunity, which we will get into oops, in uh, some of the coming videos. We'll just highlight that. So false breaks can occur 25 pips above or below a double zero box. That can often be a peak formation at the low of a week or a high of a week. And that is where the move may be exhausted. And as we head into a session, already have the higher the low locked in. Or if it's a trend trade, we may be coming out of that peak formation low into a new double zero box into the new day. Euro Yen's a great example of this. They broke into the upper double zero box, went up three levels before pulling back and then trading back up into the high for a sell high opportunity. Again, observe the volume being caught up high into the London session. This is an example of where they've gone down almost three levels below the double zeros and putting in a peak formation below 50. That market then continued to reverse back up above double zeros. And you'll notice that this now potentially in a strongly trending market is a peak formation, midweek peak formation for a continuation with the existing long trend. This is a dump and pump on a 15 minute chart. Same mechanism as the pump and dump, but you'll notice they took traders down, which is a stop hunt on these higher level longs to your left side. So again, they've gone vertical, trap volume up high, stop hunt, scalp in Asia, drag traders back up high again, scalp on higher level longs heading into the night, pull back and continue that move down, peak formation low, and then back up into the double zero box, locking in the low at zeros and continuing the move up. Again, they break out above 
into the new double zero box. Three levels of rise, volume trapped up high, a level three trade on day five. Again, three three days up, midweek reset, day one, day two, day three, Friday, peak formation high, and a 75 pip move down. Good example of the 25 pip increment failure above the double zero box after hitting stops. They went up 25 pips, uh, almost 25 pips, failing and locking in the double zeros for a reversal. They consolidate in the quarter level below the double zeros. Okay, so traders are looking for that reversal continuation and they reverse it off the quarter level above. So we have our 25 pip stop hunt and a peak formation locking in the double zeros for the continuation into Friday for the second day trade opportunity in Europe. So whenever a level approaches the double zeros, you'll notice in this particular case, peak formation low on the Wednesday, sorry, the Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, volume traps up high, but it's a continuation, an ascending triangle set up in a continuing trending market as opposed to a peak formation reversal. So 25 pip increments are really important to pay attention to around the double zeros. So just to hammer this home, trade setups can be session scalps as we observe, 25 to 50 pips. They may be session reversals. So high a day, low a day, high of the week, low of the, low of the day. So we can get something at the high of the week that trades back to the low of the day and that may be it and the market may continue to trend in the next session which is why if you're selling at the high of a, of a, a week in a uptrending market you want to be locking in profits not looking for you know a massive reversal unless it's set up on a level three blow off we saw some examples of on gold oil nasdaq a few weeks ago High of the month, high of the year, high of the week, opportunities. And these are ones, obviously, that have the potential to reverse all the way back to the other side. So you're going to have session reversals, which are scalps. Again, maybe 50, 100 pips. It might go from New York to the low of the day, uh, New York high of the day, low of the day of Asia. It may just be a London uh, buy low Asia high reversal for 50 pips. Uh, it depends on the volatility of the instrument and where we're at on the days of the week. And when we get understanding the three pushes versus uh, three levels of rise or fall or a level three trade, and then, of course, a day three, and it could even be a week three, as we just saw on gold. So you should be able to identify a couple of buy and sell setups. I've already gone through. I look for pump and dumps. Trend trades typically will be squeezes or consolidations at the lower high of the week if it's a consolidating sideways market obviously you won't see a pump and dump within a trend pump and dumps within a trend will typically be scalps or stop hunts that happen within the session or at the session open timing windows they'll take people in the we talked about the one two three the 45 minute pattern taking people into the higher the low before the reversal three pushes and that's a stop hunt on a counter trend stop hunt on traders that have been caught chasing the trend on the third level. So if you get caught on any third level, you can face large losses. Understand that. You could be buying into the high, selling into the low, and that may you you want to definitely make sure you are not doing that on a level three, especially if it's day three, week three, uh even month month three because you could be facing a market that may not come back and that may blow your account out and even if you're over leveraged oversized on any session scalp and you're counter trending a level three move you know 25 50 to 75 pips is enough to blow out most small retail traders accounts so hopefully you got value from today's video traders uh you know we've covered a lot you're gonna have to go back and study this review the notes uh this is glean from you know pouring over these simple concepts but the most important thing to hammer home is this again as I said there will always be exceptions look for best trade setups if you don't know what they are then you need to build your playbook then this will come together for you if you know what you're looking for and that's all that you're looking for. Trading will get a lot easier and simpler. You'll quit getting caught into garbage. You'll quit having impulsive, irrational, emotional trades. You'll, your confidence 
and your consistency will start to improve, but you'll be able to develop your process and refine it and really start to hone in on the best trade setups and trade like a professional. So have a great trading session. Uh, start the week off strong. Hopefully this uh, gave you some more insight into what we've talked about. Let's make this your best trading week ever. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.